We all know that 90% of all millionaires come through real estate investment. What most people don't know is that the wealthiest people in real estate don't come from money. They learn a specific type of real estate investment strategy called creative financing. And this is where they find a way without money and without credit to acquire real estate with nothing. They're basically inventing money out of thin air. And having invested in real estate for the last two decades, having done thousands of deals, I've learned a lot of really cool strategies. And I thought for today's video, I'm gonna just compress all of them into the top 10 creative real estate strategies that I've ever used for crushing it in real estate. Bottom line, the lack of money or credit should never be a reason to not build wealth. And today, I'm gonna prove it. Listen, we all know what traditional financing is, right? It's like, I saved up money for a down payment, I've got good credit, I go to the bank, and then basically I work with the bank and the seller on the property, and between all of us, we strike a deal, I'm basically gonna put a down payment, the bank's gonna give me the rest of the money, the seller walks away from the house, the house is mine. That's traditional. What we're talking about today is not traditional. We're talking about creative real estate and it was born in the 1970s because back then interest rates were like 18% and people were like I can't get a mortgage through a bank sustainably like it just doesn't work and what they had to do was get creative and say all right if I still want to own real estate I'm gonna have to learn a sneaky way of doing it I'm gonna have to find a way to acquire real estate if I can even without a bank and creative real estate was born and since then we have these people that have popped up like business partners with the one and only Robert G Allen that wrote nothing down back in the 1980s who could prove that you could send him to any city in the world with hundred dollars in his bank account and with Within 72 hours, he could buy a perfectly fine piece of real estate. So creative financing in real estate refers to the use of non-traditional or unconventional methods to acquire funding for real estate investments. These methods are often used when traditional financing options such as a bank loan or a mortgage may be too difficult to obtain or you're just a savvy real estate investor that says, why would I use money if I just don't need to? So let me just demonstrate a couple of ways that I've used creative real estate. I'm sitting right now in a commercial building and when I went to go buy this building, they wanted a million dollars for it because it was totally run down and I was gonna have to put a few million dollars into it to turn it into this convention center that it is. So I went to the people selling the building and I said, hey, I want to give you a $5,000 down payment and basically give me up to a year to obtain financing to buy this for a million dollars. And you know what, they agreed to it. So it wasn't a pure no money down deal because I put down a few thousand bucks, but basically they said, hey, for the next year, as long as you make a minimum monthly payment, we'll basically buy you time until you can actually get this deal financed. What that meant was I was controlling a million dollars of real estate that was gonna become worth millions of dollars, but basically for just a monthly payment. Six months later, I had a handful of investors and the SBA, the government financing arm that kicked in and said, we'll provide the rest of the money and voila, got the money to basically buy the place, fix it up and run it as a business. The house that I'm living in right now with my family, I negotiated with the developer to give them a down payment on the house and said, hey, I want you to be the bank. I'll make monthly payments to you, but in nine months, I'll be able to get permanent financing in place. And you know what they did? They worked with me, we did the deal. Nine months later, I got the bank loan in place. And again, I was able to spend nine months prior living in the house with my family that I wanted to live in that was best for us. Creativity made that happen. All right, what we're gonna do right now is launch into the 10 types of creative financing. The first one is called seller financing. This is when the seller of a property provides financing to the buyer instead of the buyer obtaining a loan from a bank. This can be beneficial for both parties as it allows the seller to sell the property quickly and the buyer to avoid the strict requirements of traditional lenders. Now I love seller financing because it basically means that whoever I'm buying the house from, they already have a loan. And I go to them and I basically say, hey, you've got the loan, why don't I just make payments that go directly to the bank and kind of take over, you be the bank. And there's a lot of sellers that say, no skin off my back, no problem whatsoever. If this gets the deal done, let's do seller financing. By the way, I just recently did this with the business. The business was for sale for $10 million. I went to the owner of the business and I said, hey, there are some problems with your business. So if you're a little bit flexible and we can agree on terms, I'll still buy your business. And ultimately I agreed to make payments of $100,000 a month, every single month until the $10 million is paid. But right up front, I get the bank account, I get all the assets, I get the employee, I get everything. And I've started working that business and I've been turning it into a cash cow. Well, guess what? I didn't need to write a $10 million check 
All I had to do was start making monthly payments. That's also seller financing. Number two, hard money loans. These are short-term loans that are secured by real estate. They are usually provided by private lenders and have higher interest rates than traditional loans. Hard money loans can be useful for investors who need to close quickly or have poor credit. So for example, let's say I'm buying a property and I'm gonna flip it. And let's just say it's worth $300,000 fixed up, but I negotiate it at 50 cents on the dollar. I'm buying it for $150,000. I can go to a hard money lender and instead of them charging five or six or 7% like a bank, maybe they're gonna charge me 10%, 12% or 14% but they're going to give me the $150,000 to buy the house cash. They're going to give me $50,000 to fix up the house. And I'm going to borrow enough money where I can give myself four or six months to actually sell the thing. Well, they feel great lending the money to me because it's collateralized by a property that I negotiated for half off. And maybe they want collateral on another home or two of mine, but bottom line is they give me the money. Now I'm doing the deal. Six months later, when I sell it and turn a $50,000 profit, they've been fully paid back plus their 12% interest. Hard money is very common in the game of real estate. However, hard money is not good for long-term loans. 12% is a very steep interest rate to pay if you're gonna keep servicing that debt for years to come. It's usually better for short-term plays. All right, let's get creative with number three. It's called home equity loans or HELOCs home equity lines of credit. These are loans that allow you to borrow against the equity in your home. They can be used to finance real estate investments, but they come with risks such as the possibility of foreclosure if you're unable to make payments. The very first house I bought a year later, I got an $18,600 line of credit. I used that to cover the down payment on my next investment property. How cool that my first house bought my second house and I didn't have to come out of pocket at all. By the way, guess what happened to that second house? I used the equity in that second house to buy my third house. And years later when I sold it, I made over $130,000. Now, if I put up no money and I made $130,000, guess what kind of return that is? That's an infinite return because I literally made $130,000 out of thin air because I got creative by borrowing money out of the other asset. Number four, crowdfunding. This has become very popular in the last five years. This is when a group of people pool their money together to invest in a property. Crowdfunding can be a good option for investors who do not have a lot of capital, but want to invest in real estate. What you do need to know is that crowdfunding is a security. You need to involve a lawyer that can prepare legal documents so that everyone putting in a little bit of money, collectively forming a lot of money, understand that there are risks to investing their money. And the bottom line is this is a security. So you are going to need a lawyer to do this one correctly. Over the last decade, I've run several funds. I basically put a fund together, a bunch of people throw money in, we buy a whole bunch of real estate, we let it build in value, we someday sell it all off, everyone gets their money back, and voila, everybody wins. Number five is a favorite of mine. It's called private money loans. These are loans that are provided by individuals rather than banks. Private money can be used for investors who need to close a deal quickly or have poor credit. It sounds a little bit like a hard money loan, but those are actually professional private organizations that are looking at lending their capital on real estate specifically. Private money isn't always collateralized to real estate. My father-in-law has lent me a lot of private money to do all sorts of business and real estate deals over the years. I've got other people in my network. They're just regular human beings that have excess capital, they wanna earn interest on it. Number six, equity sharing. This is when the buyers and sellers split the equity in the property. This can be beneficial for buyers who do not have a lot of capital but wanna invest in real estate. This is something that I do a lot of. I often call it partnering. I basically say, hey, if you have the money, bring it to me, I'll find the deals and I'll do all the work and then we're gonna take the profits, the equity, we're gonna share everything together. I've done this strategy well over a thousand times with individuals that basically say, my money's locked in a 401k or an IRA and I'm not happy with its performance. Literally, it's earning me five or 6% on the 30 year average. But if I can take it out and I can put it into real estate and have it earning 25%, 35%, and then we split the profits or let it compound with time, well, opportunity cost wise, that's a much smarter choice for the financial situation they're in. And this is one of the most common creative financing strategies that I leverage every single day. One of my favorite strategies, the seventh strategy is called subject to financing or sub two. This is when the buyer takes over the seller's mortgage payments. This can be beneficial for buyers who do not have the credit or income to qualify for a traditional loan. I get people that will reach out to me and say, Chris, I'm going into foreclosure, or I'm behind on my payments, will you just take over my house? Will you get me caught up and take over my house? And I love those kind of deals because 
We have, for example, really high interest rates today. Let's say there's seven or eight percent on investments. Well, if someone did their deal years earlier and they locked in a two or three or four percent rate, I can basically assume it. I can take it over and say, hey, just give me the asset and let me take it over. And I can't tell you how often that is one of the most perfect ways of structuring a deal. Number eight, wraparound mortgages. This is when the buyer takes out a second mortgage to cover the difference between the purchase price and the amount of the first mortgage. This can be beneficial for buyers who do not have the credit or income to qualify for a traditional loan. Number nine is called cross collateral. If you're expanding your real estate portfolio, one option is to tap into your equity on existing properties to finance another. Instead of borrowing against the equity like a home equity loan, you're using the property as additional collateral. The lender will then have a lien on both your existing property and the new property if you were to default. In exchange, you can finance your deal without the need of a down payment or an additional loan. I've actually borrowed money so many times and people say, wait, how do I know this is gonna be safe or secure? And I say, hey, I'll just, I'll just collateralize it against my portfolio. And they say, oh, well that's great because you're worth millions and millions and millions and millions of dollars. So if anything ever goes wrong, then we can sell your assets and I can get paid back that way. Collateral is for me often a device that I use to create comfort when people are doing financing with me. And when I need to, I'll literally just say, hey, we can collateralize this asset over here against the loan. It makes people feel so comfortable. In other words, if you own a home and let's say it's half paid off, you have equity. Let's say you're trying to structure some deal and the person's not feeling really comfortable with the deal. You can say, hey, we can collateralize it with the equity in my home. I've got 150 grand and all of a sudden they feel really comfortable about writing you a $50,000 check. The 10th strategy we're gonna talk about today is another one that I use all the time. It's called a self-directed IRA. We could call it a self-directed 401k. Check this out. A self-directed IRA is a type of individual retirement account that can also be used as an investment vehicle. Just think for a moment, the people that are putting money in a 401k or an IRA for retirement. Well, that money is sitting in the market and it's often in these blue chip companies producing its five or 6% on the 30 year average. There are years when they'll make like 18% or 12% and then there are years where they'll lose 18% or 12%, but they tend to average out at five or 6%. Well, if you were to ever take your money out of an IRA, for example, you you'd have to pay taxes and penalties. Penalties are 10% and then taxes are whatever tax rate that you're in. Like, let's say I had $200,000 in an IRA and I normally make only 50,000 a year. If I take that out, I'm gonna pay 20,000 for my 10% penalty and then I'm gonna add the remaining 180,000 to my $50,000 a year income, my taxes are gonna be crazy high. So instead, I just say I'm coming out of the market and I'm gonna self-direct my IRA. And there are things that I can do with that self-directed account that has helped me avoid taxes and penalties. One thing that I can do, I can invest in certain types of real estate and businesses, and guess what? I paid no taxes, I paid no penalty, and I access money. People everywhere have 401ks and IRAs and they're not happy with their performance, so if you find something worth investing in or a really good real estate deal, someone's self-directed IRA or 401k may come to the rescue to provide the creative financing to make that deal go through. You know what's so funny about this video? I can't believe that I'm teaching this because 20 years earlier when I was learning it, it went right over my head and thank goodness I had a mentor to straighten me out and show me all these strategies and help me implement them. And guess what? Over time I figured it out and now I'm one of those dudes doing tons of real estate, not because I have money, got that too, but it's because I have this knowledge of creative financing. If you want a mentor, would you like to have a mentor teach you how to do this stuff? Because guess who I am? I'm a mentor for certain people out there that are saying, Chris, I wanna become a real estate mogul like you. I wanna invest successfully. Sure, maybe I do have money, but maybe I don't. Help me get started in the game. If you want me to be your mentor and show you and help you figure out how to implement all of these strategies, click the link below and fill out the form and say, I want Chris to be my mentor. If you want me to be your mentor, click the link, fill it out, and I'm gonna have my team in touch with you. And what they're gonna do is they're gonna find out, are you motivated? Are you serious? Are you excited? Are you willing to roll up your sleeves? Because if you are, you may be selected as my next student where I'll give you my tools, my resources, my team, my coaches, and me to help you do your next deal. You know, there are two types of people out there. There are those that say, teach me, and there are those that just say, do it for me. And you know what? I tend to be a do it for me kind of guy. So if you appreciated the knowledge, but you're like, I don't know if I want to learn it, Chris, will you just do it for me? Can we buy real estate together? Can we partner up? Can you cause that? And the answer is yes, I can do that as well. And if, in fact, if you want to know what it looks like to partner with me and work with me and have me kind of handle all the crazy logistics and build the wealth, build the portfolio, click right here and let me show you how it works.